Well, the title of my message today is Expect the favor of God for such a time as this. For such a time as this. You know, what is the time at present? I'm not talking about the clock. What is the time that we are experiencing, experiencing at the moment? We have all good word, definition. Hard time. Difficult time, unprecedented times, unusual times, dark, crisis, downward trend, financial crisis. That's the time that we are experiencing. And what happens is, when we go through a difficult moment like this, there is a shift that takes place in our expectation. You know what's expectation? That desire, that hope. And I believe at this time when things are difficult, I really know and you know things are difficult in different areas for each and every person. And in such a time, there is like, you know, this feeling of low expectancy. You know, you feel like, is it possible that my dream will come true? Is it possible that the promises of God which has spoken over my life will ever come true? What can I look to? for in my future. And today I, I believe God wants us to know this, expect the favor of God for such a time like this. Because to expect the favor of God in times when it is good, there is no credit for God so much. But when you expect it, when a time like this, then it is all about God. You know, the favor of God shines brighter during the dark times. You see, the stars are there constantly, but you can see them only at night when it's dark. And I, and I believe God is moving mightily at this time. There are people out here, not here, sorry, but people all around are blaming God. Just blaming God. And I'm, I've reached at a point, maybe you have reached, okay? But I'm just reaching to that point. For me, if anybody says anything against God, it just hurts me. And when I hear something good about God, you know, I'm like, yay. You know, I imagine God sitting next to me. That's my personal rapport with God. So when somebody praises God, I'm like, there, that one is for you, huh? See, see, it's all about you. And I just feel so great. That's the point I have reached. And I believe, you know, you know, when the lockdown started, when this COVID started, there was a video that went viral. There was a person who said, speaking against men of God, speaking against minister of God, pastors and prophets, that person said, if you guys, the ministers of the gospel, knew COVID-19 was coming, why didn't you all make us aware of it? Now, that person was blaming men of God. But I'm saying, if you are really want to know about what is going to happen, turn into the Bible and see what God had prophesied. Things will be hard. Now, I can say to the person, sorry, I didn't know COVID-19 was coming because God didn't reveal it to me. But right now, I can tell to that person how you can face this COVID-19. Expecting the favor of God for such a time like this. I can say this with confidence. Because I'm telling you people are all out blaming God. But God is moving mightily. He's showing his favor. He's sparkling it out. And I'm telling you this is the time that you have to expect it. If you read in Ephesians chapter 3 verses 20 it says. I'm reading from the Amplified Classified Version. It says, Now to him who by, in consequence of the action of his power, that is at work within us, is able to carry out his purpose. You know, God will always fulfill his purpose. Whether it's COVID-19, whether it's famine, or whatever, he will always fulfill his purpose in your life. Know for that sure. Do super abundantly, far over and above, all that we dare ask 
or think infinitely beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts, and hopes or dreams. Now, I want you to have an idea about your expectation. What is your expectation from God? Are you expecting big things? If it is big thing, can I see your hand? Okay, now. Okay, very good. I don't think so this message is for this crowd. I think it is for my YouTube viewers. Okay, you are expecting great things from God. But how is your prayer? God, please do something new. What is your desires? What's your thoughts? What is your speech? You'll come to know your expectation based on how you speak. Your hopes, your dreams. If you read in one of the versions, you know, the Amplified, it says, He is able to do. The same scripture, in one more version, it says, He is able to do. And what is happening, you know, people are all out changing the image of God. I want to tell you, you cannot change God. You cannot because he is the unchanging one. When he says, I'm able to do it, I will do it. And we are like, no, it's God. maybe it is not possible. Huh? I may not get this job. Sometimes we go for an interview, having high expectation, you say. But as you're sitting there and you see some people better than you and if maybe I may not get this. Huh? Your boyfriend calls you, gallery interview, but this one I'm out there. High expectation, but the words are different. But God is telling, he is able to do. And you know, one of the things I want, the expectation is very important. I want to tell you that keep your expectation high. No matter what is happening around. Just because something is available to us, we may not make use of it. And it's so true with God. God gives us so many things and we are not able to receive it and enjoy it by faith. Is that true? Let me explain to you what, what I said just now. How many of you have been for a rich man's wedding? A rich man's son or daughter getting married. Oh my God. The costumes, the decoration. Forget about it. The main thing about a rich man's wedding is the food. Is the buffet. It starts with the cake. Three, four tire cake. Then it starts with the snacks. My God, five, six, seven items. And then is the main thing is the food. Nine course meal. Fifty items. Continental Chinese goan. It's all about that food. Now, if you have been for that wedding, would it be possible for you to have all the items? Not possible. And then afterwards we discuss. If your friends and sister, are you going to the section and sambara chi kodi ali? Kitte bore ali te sarki authentic govan maka maje aje chi ugda selo. No, we talk about it. And the same thing is with God. We have no clue or idea what happened at the cross. And I want to tell you the cross still prevails. You know, we are magnifying COVID-19. But I want to tell you what Christ did at the cross is still prevails. And what spread he has, you know, he says that he tore the veil. And there was a big spread. Today in Christ, when you're born again, you know, when we say born again, we say born again. But you don't know what you have when you come into the family of God. There is a big spread of buffet. It is grace, it is faith, it's mercy, it's anointing, it's the presence, it's the gift of the Holy Spirit, it's the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Everything is spread out. It is given to you and me. Strength, help, ability. And I'm telling you, 50, most of the Christians, we do not know this is available to us. 
Let me tell you honestly, how many of you know help is available to you? Tell me. How many of you really know that strength is available to you in a difficult moment? If you're bringing up some difficult child, that strength is available to you. If you're dealing with an abusive husband, that grace is available to you. You know, I didn't know. I didn't know help was available to me when I met God. And when I had kids in my initial years, I didn't know help was available. That's why I could say, God, I, you have cursed me. And God had to reveal it to me to bring up the kids. Is This is help, Shweta. This is strength. This is grace. And today when people say, oh my God, Shweta, how you do? You know, now the younger generation have kids, one kid, and they look at me and say, Shweta, how you do with three kids brought up so well? I know what it is. And I know who it is. It is God and God alone. You know, Chaitra put something very beautiful for my birthday on a week ministry page. Shweta, you are a woman of great valor. You know what's valor? Great courage in the face of fear. I know what I am. You know, I'm learning, I'm practicing four-wheeler now. I had taken license two years back, but it was just kept accumulating dust. But now I have to practice it. And today I was coming, okay? at the highway at the junction. So I had to stop first gear and the car is not starting only, not moving only, okay? The bus is on this side and some vehicle is there and I'm like dripping. All my moisturizer is gone. And Michael is, what are you doing, Shweta? What are you doing, Shweta? I'm doing, I'm trying. What are you doing, Shweta? What are you doing? I'm doing, I'm doing. And they were very patient. Three minutes I struggled. Finally, Michael had to open the door and come, start the car. I will not do this next time with you, okay? You have to do it. <laughs> but you know what? I'm not going to give up because I know what is available to me. Help is available to me. Ability is available to me. And I'm telling you is you should know what is available to us. We have that because Christ has given to us. And I want you to expect, you know, sometimes we say, you know, when I say expect from God, you know, some of them have this wrong thinking. We must not expect. Because if you don't expect, you won't be disappointed if you don't get. Right? But you know what? I'm not telling you to expect from men. Because if you expect from men, this will happen. But if you expect from God, he will always satisfy you. And even if you're asking the wrong things and he doesn't give you, you will still be happy. Because what you're asking, if it is not his will, and if he doesn't give you, it's still good for you. You may be saying, I want this man. I want to get married. I'm expecting from God. Four years you're praying. But God has not given you. Because he's a married man already. <laughs> so still it is good for you. So expect from God. His favor from him. Now, how many of you want favor of God? Okay, all of you want the favor of God. So what is the favor of God now? Don't know. Just heard that favor of God. But you want it. It's available to you. Now favor of God is a part of the grace. If you read in the New Testament, in grace and favor comes from the same Greek word charis. Which means an act of kindness. You know what is grace, you know? What you deserve, you don't get. We are saved by grace through faith in Christ Jesus. Grace is something that you get what you don't deserve. You know what we deserve, you and I? To go to hell. This is what we deserve because of our sins. But because of grace, and we put our faith in Christ, he gives us heaven in place of that. You don't deserve it. So, Favor is an act of kindness, what you don't deserve. It is preferential treatment. It treats you differently. It's a special regard. It is a demonstrated delight that God is happy with you. God is so happy with you, you know, he wants to do something for you. So favor is a gift from God. You don't earn it. It's not your struggle. Your effort, your striving, it is purely God. 
So at the end of it, we can give glory to God. You know, what is favor? Favor is like, you know, the doors which were not opening, it opens. The doors which were not closing, closes. It is like you go for an interview, you are supposed to be the last person, but you happen to be the next in line to get the job. In a workplace, you are not supposed to get that job, promotion, but you get it. You go to a shopping mall and you find the favor of God. Online you checked, it was 50% off, but you go there to purchase, it is 75% off. Yes, I go, when I go for shopping, I ask favor of God, God, give me a, give me a favor, give me a good bargain. Why not? We have to release our faith and believe for it. That's the favor of God. You know what is basically a favor of God is God showing up. He says, you are like COVID-19, economic crisis, financial crisis, and you can't see God. And God is saying, so God comes and says, suddenly he shows up. You got a promotion. Have you heard? I have heard testimonies that at such a time like this, people are getting promoted. They're getting raise in pay. It's happening. God is showing himself. And I want you to believe at such a time like this, that you will see the favor of God. Now, why do, you, why do I need to teach about this favor of God? Two important things. The first thing is if you read in Hebrews chapter 4, verses 3. Why, we, why do we need to know about the favor of God? First thing, it brings us to the place of rest. Have anybody tried pleasing people? Oh, it's like a bondage. I have to call that person on the birthday. Are, how did I forget? She will behave differently tomorrow. I have to go for the function. I have to call up. Why? Because that person helped me in my bad times. Now I have to keep on pleasing that person. You have to be in that good favor, in good books. I'm telling you, you will strive, you struggle. and effort. You know, one thing about God, we receive everything by faith. That word receive is very important. We don't get. You know, the word get is your struggling. It's your effort. But we just receive. Because grace is is the price paid for us. And faith is the hand that goes and receives it. Isn't that amazing? And the price is already paid. But we don't release our faith. So what happens in Hebrew 4, 3, it says, When you believe, you enter the rest of God. So when you know the favor of God, you are at rest, you know. Because right now I'm telling you, many of us are trying something. To work things out. But I want to tell you. When you know the part that you cannot do. And you trust God to do that part. That is called resting. Resting is not rest from work. It's resting in work. I cannot change my husband who is abusive. But I can trust and rest in God. That God you will change him. I can't change the teenager children. I mean they are so different. They have different moods and you tell them just don't use the mobile and you're counting one, two, three, it's going on, please. You can't change them. You need to trust God to do that. So that is the thing. We, we, it gives us rest from. It brings us rest. Secondly, we need to know the favor of God is because it releases from fear. How many of you are scared about your present? How many of you? Nobody? Scared about your future. But you know, when you know the favor of God, you will be at rest. Because even if bad is happening, God will turn it for good. Do you know that Romans 8, 28 can be visible right now? It says, God will work all things for good, those who love him. And this is exactly what is happening. You know, people's testimonies, I am seeing the favor of God. I am seeing God doing it. He's turning things for good. I can say that. You know, my mom is to always be depressed. Always. Fourth day, she would not cook. But eight months, she's cooking. And she's good. God has given them place right now. I am seeing the favor of God. 
God can work things for your good. That's why we don't have to fear. Now today I'm going to speak on three people who experience the favor of God. There are many people, but I'm going to speak just three. And I'm going to stress on the third person, Ruth. The first person is Esther. If you read in Esther 2.17. Now, all the three people, they experienced the favor of God when things were difficult, okay? But things are difficult. You know, I, I've heard people saying, you know, things are so bad for me. I have not gone to the mall six months. I have not bought one top. I have not celebrated my birthday. I miss this birthday. We are just make, magnifying this COVID-19. Do you know what people have? Have you ever ex known, seen the videos, the people who went through Holocaust? Six million Jews were killed. And the survivors, you know what was happening? Today, 14 days quarantine, you're saying, oh, there is no internet for me. Are the dead bodies were dying. No one to bury. They were living with that smell. They were locked in one small room, no food. That was the experience of Holocaust. And I'm going to explain to you three people who are going through tough times. I can say worse than COVID-19, but they saw the favor of God. And I want you to experience the favor of God and expect it at such a time like this. Esther was that person. You know, if you see in 2, Esther 2, 17. And she found favor and kindness with him. You know, Esther was one of the person the Jewish person who was taken as captive to Babylon. You know what is? You're taken away from your home. All of you are staying in your houses, no? Right? All of you are staying in your houses. But she was taken as a captive. And a Persian king was ruling at that time. So you're away from your family. She had no parents. Often she was a foreigner. Because the king was a Persian and she was a Jew. I mean, Munta Nunganti. A person from South India comes to Goa, you say, Ganti. Huh? But a Goan goes to UK, to Ganti Zangnathur. Are it's globalization, right? It's globalization. So here you see, she's an orphan. She's an outcast. And in such a time like this, the king wants to have a beauty contest. He wants a wife. So he puts publicly... And you know what happens? When Esther goes there, she finds favor with all the workers. If you see in Esther 2.9. Now the young woman pleased him and she obtained his favor. So he readily gave beauty preparation to her besides her allowance. So she gets extra. She doesn't get the normal sunscreen. But she gets a moisturizer and foundation and... I don't know what it is. I don't use all that thing. So she gets extra preparation. Then seven choice maid servants were provided for her from the king's palace. And he moved her and her maid servant to the best place. Come on. Esther, an orphan, in such a difficult time, she gets the best place. And what happens? God, I mean the king selects her as the wife. You know, when you go, maybe right, off, right now, maybe you have lost your job. I'm talking to the one who have tuned in right now. You have lost your job. And you're giving your bio data and CV. I want you to go in faith. Knowing and believing and trusting God. God, I will see your favor in this particular job. He's going to do that for you. You need to have that and when Esther went there, knowing, you know, what, what was the key thing about Esther? Why did God show favor? You know, when I talk about favor of God, I'm not talking that God has favorites, okay? I'm not nullifying the scripture, Romans 2, 4, 11, which says that God show, does not show favorites. When I talk about favor, it's like this, you know, when you like somebody, what do you do? You want to be with that person, no? You want to spend time. You want to phone. You want to connect. And that person does something, same thing with God. You know, he's looking. You're just, you're doing the right thing. When the wrong things are happening. You're, you're persevering. You're not giving up. People are abusing you. Persecuting you. Yet you're saying, Jesus, I love you. Doesn't that move God's heart? 
we get moved and say what a testimony man and god is saying oh she is standing for me he is standing for me i want to do something for you i want to do something that's favor god just gets delighted it's a preferential treatment god says no i'm going to bless this one not because you have done something just because you have stood with god and you know what happens to esther when she selected as the queen she goes and she tells i will do because the people were supposed to be eradicated the jews were supposed to be eradicated by haman and she says i will perish and i will even if i have to die i will stand for god i will do god's will and that's why she saw the favor of god the second person that i want to talk about is joseph joseph saw the favor of god you know if you look into joseph's life he was a slave he was kicked out from his family again was it a good time for him he was thrown into the pit was it a good time for him but you know what when he goes to work as a slave he is being favored by the men so joseph found favor in his sight and he served him then he made him overseer of his house so where he is working he is in charge later on he was abused i mean a complaint was put that he raped the owner's wife and he was put in the prison but in the prison also the keeper of the prison finds favor with him and is kept in in charge and last you know what happens he goes to meet pharaoh to interpret a dream now pharaoh is saying you know what i want to meet joseph because joseph interprets dreams can i have an appointment for half an hour so joseph is going in the king's palace half an hour appointment okay he is going as a prisoner okay as a slave ex slave and a prisoner he is going to his cabin he is interpreting the dream now just one appointment one connection divine appointment he comes out with a ring and saying i am the prime minister of egypt can you see that that's the favor of god at such a time like this and i want to believe it it can be just one connection god has just kept everything lined up for you it's lined up for you he has released it you have to release your faith and receive say god i believe i will see your favor and the third person i want to talk about today the main person is ruth and i love the book of ruth ruth chapter 210 now ruth the story about ruth you know what ruth lost everything she was a moabite she was not a jew she was a moabite she lost her husband her brother in law died her father in law died she's living moab and she, moab, moab and she's coming back to juda she's coming back to that country israel so she has lost everything no husband no children no property no job nothing she is just a poor widow she doesn't have a job she doesn't have food to eat maybe right now your situation is like this economic crisis and she comes there and a mother is send, sending her what you know to work in the fields and it says she was gleaning the field you know what is gleaning god made a provision for the poor when the field at the center portion of the field the owner of the field would clear it up but the border line of the field he would never touch the crop he would never cut it he would keep for the poor to come this is god's provision for the poor so they would come remove one at a time anyone has done paddy plucking one thing at a time they would come in the morning and remove whatever is in the corner so she imagine her state she is going from morning to evening and she is cleaning now it says that she meets boaz ruth chapter 2 verses 3 now just see ya huh? then she left and went and gleaned in the field after the reapers and she happened to come to the part of the field belonging to boaz i want you to focus on the word happened we say that it is coincidence we say that it is luck it wasn't coincidence it wasn't luck it was planned by god because something moved in the heart of god for ruth in ruth chapter 1 
she says to Naomi, your God will be my God. I have nothing right now. I've lost my husband. I lost my property. I'm nothing. I may be like a barren person. But your God will be my God. And that is all that you need to do. Do the right things. Even when the wrong things are happening. And that will draw the favor of God in your life. And as she goes there to glean, she meets Boaz. And she's surprised. And I want to tell you, it's like, you know, she's taking one step, blessing. Another step, a blessing. You know what happens? Boaz comes to know that Ruth is gleaning the field. He inquires with his workers, who is this lady? Who is this lady? And in verse 8 to 9, Boaz meets Ruth and see what he promises. The first thing he promises her is protection. Because when a young lady goes to glean the field, there are some evil men who will come to rape, to abuse. And Boaz is saying, I will protect you. You will listen, my daughter, will you not? Do not go to glean another field, nor go from here. But stay close to my young woman. Verse 9. Let your eyes be on the field which they reap and go after them. For I have commanded the young men not to touch you. That's the protection. She was a widow. She had no food. First thing she receives the blessing is the protection. At such a time like this. You know if you have protection right now in your life. When people are suffering and falling sick, it is the favor of God. Don't say it is because I'm praying. It is the favor of God. You are alive and well. It's the favor of God. Thousands may fall at your side. Ten thousand may fall. But He will preserve you. It's the favor of God. Appreciate that. In verse 15 to 16, in the same chapter, and when she rose up to glean, now she's going to glean. You know, to glean is one plant at a time. It's one. And when she rose up to glean, Boaz commanded his young men saying, let her glean even among the sheaves and do not reproach her. You know what is sheaves? It's a bundle of wheat. You know what? Boaz is having a conversation, okay? Ruth is there. Boaz is having a conversation with the people, with his workers. You know, he's saying what? Take a bundle and just place it. Bundle. And as she goes, she's not removing one, but she's finding it bundles. She didn't have to pluck. She didn't have to pull. But she gets bundled. You know, favor of God is you have not worked for it and you will get. You will stay in the houses which you have not built. You will have that vineyard which you have not grown. That's the favor of God. That's the favor of God. And you just see, she's taking hardly first, she says, the protection. Secondly, saying, you know, come and have meal with me. Thirdly, saying, she finds bundle. And you know what happens? She goes there as a slave, as a poor woman. And after that, Boaz says, I'm going to marry her. And she becomes the owner of that very field that she worked. Can you believe that? Can you believe that? Esther, she went as an applicant. But she becomes the queen of the palace. Joseph, he was the slave, a prisoner. But he comes out as the prime minister of Egypt, second in charge. Esther was a slave in that field and that very field she becomes the owner because that's the favor of God and I just want to end with this testimony of mine you all must have heard that Michael is saying you know we are going for a new car and as we were sharing this about we are going for a new car I can gauge the expression of people when, I, when we share it to them Michael said you know we are planning to buy a car so people are like, yeah, for Shweta, no. What is that? Alto is good for her. Or a Wagoner. But we have something different in mind. Because God is good. 
and he give good things for his children so they say oh you're going for this car covid time are two months back you were saying you have to pay the bill of this gara two lakhs in march you were saying you have to pay the taxes and now you're saying installment and now you're saying you're buying a car and which car is it so they're not satisfied you know they ask which model so their their eyes are like they still not satisfied they ask the third question what is the price you know when we were planning this this is for a purpose we are doing and i believe the peace of god is there this time as we are going and i thought we are supposed to have an extension of 6 months for the monitorum but when we went to the bank the bank said no it is only for the tourism sector so you may not get so i am calculating and we came that day and i was a little bit disappointed i was sitting on the couch me and michael i said michael we won't go for the car please we'll manage somehow in pune because god is good he said no 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 we'll go for it so i told michael okay we'll pray for the favor of god this is what i said to him we'll pray for the favor of god if god wants to give it we'll just pray that the money would come he will show it to us that this is this was 8 o'clock at night the next day 11 o'clock in the morning michael checks his mobile and he says there's a transfer of 70000 in my account and he's like i'm like what happened what happened we are going for a car i said no me we want little more after two days 15 years old friend of us he was not in touch with us just send some money that's the favor of god and i'm telling you this is not what i deserve but god wants to show it is that sparkle you know will happen just like esther little bit you see the favor of god and i believe lord many of you are experiencing and i want you to release that faith the favor of god is for you and me and we need to expect it for such a time like this i've heard people messaging me i'm being promoted we had lena's testimony she's promoted as the permanent staff of gmc at such a time like this all this year she was like trying and trying but such a time like this in famine she's promoted as the permanent staff isn't that the favor of god when you and i could do not do it but god will do it you will do it. and i want to pray for you guys i want you to stand at your feet at this time he's there in this place i want to pray for you i want to pray psalms 19 90 verse 17 over your life he says let the favor of the lord our god be upon us and approve for us the work of our hands yes approve the work of our hands lord my work is trusting in you that's my work my work is resting in you that's my work my work is doing the right things even when i get the wrong response that's my work lord not how much i have cooked not how much money i have made but my work is trusting in you my work is doing the right things even if i am being abused even if i am being persecuted my reputation is gone but this is what i present to you approve our work right now father a faith in you and father i pray for favor right now father for all those who are hearing my voice i pray for favor over their life father even as they go for the interview for their job they would be selected they would see the favor even even they in their jobs father they would just get customers coming father flocking in they would get the commission father strange strange things happening father suddenly surprisingly it just happened i pray father they would find favor even when they go to their shopping father they would find favor father oh father favor rest upon your people father we pray for your favor and we release our faith we trust father that you will do father all that is needed at the end father your name is glorified your name is lifted up father the work that you did in joseph was your work it's all about you the work that is done in the life of esther is all about you the work that was done 
in the life of Ruth is all about you. And I want to tell you all people of God, when you receive the favor of God, don't sit with the favor of God. Don't sit with the favor of God. Be a blessing. The way Ruth was a blessing to the lineage of Jesus. The way Joseph was a blessing to the nation of Israel. The way Esther was a blessing to the nation of Israel. God will bless you to be a blessing. Not to just sit with the blessing. Father, I ask you to bless your people, Father. Supernatural favor. Pour out. Open heavens. Open heavens, Father. Favor. Favor. Things that happen suddenly. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. I believe you have heard my prayer. You have heard our prayer, Father. We give you the glory. Come on, give him a shout of praise. Give him a shout of praise. It belongs to him. It belongs to him. It belongs to him.